Hi, Michael Carter. Good morning. How we doing? No way. All right, good deal. First uh, question will come from Brian Keys. Brian, go ahead. Hey, Michael, how's it going? Um, I wanted to ask just how you've been doing this season um, mentally with, you know, not really knowing if games are going to happen and then Charlotte got canceled and just everything else going on. I just take it every day as it is anyway, so I'm glad we played a couple weeks ago. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I feel like probably when I went home, didn't know if we were going to play because I don't think anybody knew anything yet. But um, I'm back at school. I have practice this morning. Uh, we're going to play a game next week. And if we don't, it is what it is. I'm just, just trying to get better. All right. Thanks. All right, Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Michael. It looked in the Syracuse game like you're a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, a little bit more explosive. Is that so? And if it is, what did you do to, to, to improve in those areas? I'm glad you noticed. Pardon me? Uh, I'm glad you noticed. I've been working hard. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I feel like being able to go home and it's a little bit different training from when you're at school because I feel like when you're at home, you do more stuff like you have the ultimate say on how you feel, how your body feels and treatment. I mean, I know it's not the same treatment, but it's like the rest is important. And here the schedule is like very strict. So, I mean, you, you do too much outside of the schedule, then, um, you know, you're going to pay for it at the end of the day with, you know, injuries and tweaks and stuff like that. But just being able to um, take what Coach has, has given us, like the blueprint that Coach Hess has given us, and be able to go home with it and then add my own mix to it and just make it like my personal, you know, plan, I feel like has been really bit different. Did you notice a difference leading up to the game in practice or did it kind of really hit home that, wow, I, I am quicker, I am faster, I am a little bit more explosive? Did you did it take the Syracuse game to fully understand that? No. I feel like that when I got back. Really, really um, – I, I get so caught up in, like, the work of it. Like, when I'm at home, I'm, I get so caught up in just working every day, like, not noticing, not really, like, trying to track how much better I'm getting and just working. And then, you know, when I finally get back to practice and wear a helmet, uh, pads, and I feel – I just feel great. Like, I feel great, you know. And that's that's huge. Like, if you feel good, you look good, you know, all that, all that Deion Sanders stuff. Like, and, and, I feel – And one last thing real quickly. And, and how much did you enjoy seeing that on film? When you finally watched the game film, it was good. It was uh, I I did I did watch it. I did watch it, and I feel like <clears throat> a lot of a lot of my plays, you know, I had teammates blocking down the field, offensive linemen blowing. Oh, like I didn't like I said my freshman like I didn't really do that much on Saturday. Like, they just ran. Like, you go back and look at some of the plays. The hole is like this big, so <laughs> all I gotta do is just run straight. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Light, uh, Chapel Fowler, go ahead. Hey, Michael, I know you guys are trying to get running backs more involved um, in the passing game. Uh, uh, how do you see that helping you at the next level? I know that's something in the NFL, it seems like everyone wants a running back who can do that. Um, so just in terms of this being your last season, how do you think that can help you prospect-wise? Good question. I mean, I feel like we'll see if it's out, but – my job is to really just show what I can do. And I'm thankful to have a, a, an offensive coordinator and a running back coach and a head coach that really believes in me when I'm out there on the field. You know, I can't catch I, – whenever I go home, I do a lot of catching. I catch every day. I probably catch more than I do running back drills when I'm at home. Just, but it's a good balance. But just being, just being versatile in that aspect because you look at the new age of running backs. It's McCaffrey, right? It's um, Alvin, Alvin Cook. Joe Mixon, uh, Zeke even. A lot of guys, you know, they give a lot of credit to them other guys, but Zeke, he runs them in the slot too. Like he runs about number one. He runs the fade route. He runs he runs the corner. Like he does a lot too. So um, guys like that that are the best players in the league, Aaron Jones, I can't believe I missed him. Aaron Jones, like special talent. And it's because he's so versatile. So I feel like just going to the next level to answer your question. I, I think it does help. Thanks. 
Okay, uh, Gregory Hall, go ahead. Mike, what's a running back's relationship like with the offensive line, and what is yours specific this season with the offensive line that you guys have? I think it's probably the most important relationship because that's who you got. You got to trust them at all times to get the job done. And a, a really, you know, any good running back has full trust in the offensive line, and vice versa. You know. But also, you know, offensive linemen likes when, you know, they have some room for error. So if you're one of those running backs that have no vision, just they, you're ABC guy, like you just follow the rules and you don't have like the true instinct, it makes the job a little bit harder for the offensive line because they always have to be perfect. So I think it's just like a trust factor. Like, oh, if they, if they mess up, I got them. And if I mess up, they got me. So it's, our relationship is strong in my twins. And how do you go about building that? Is that something that, I mean, you've got a lot of young guys in the O-line, so is that something that you work on just one-on-one -on -one with them or in scrimmages, or how how is that trust built? All of the above, I would say. I mean, I see them every day. So, you know, just the more I talk to them and the more, like, you know, we work together and grind together. And, like, football really brings us together because nobody, nobody really is doing what we're doing, like, around us. Like, we really just – we really, like – or something. <laughs> football court. We love each other. And then lastly, what do you want to get out of your, your final season this year? Championship. Because that hasn't been something that's really talked about here. And I was confused why it wasn't when I got here. Because where I'm from, it's, you know, want to go home. So all the losing I wasn't really used to and it kind of got to me. So I take it personal. Like, I take it personal. Like, I want, I want to win it all. And I like saying championship because I want, to, I want to win one so bad. Like, I'm motivated more than ever. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll close up with Michael here with CL Brown. So, CL, go ahead. Hi, Michael. I was curious, uh, how will you spend your Saturday without a game? Like, how, how will you use that time? Um, do you – kind of just watch everything else that's going on? Do you try and get a look ahead at other ACC teams? What what, what do you got planned? Yeah. Um, what I'll do, I'll probably wake up whenever. And then probably go get some breakfast. Y'all eat uh, uh, First Watch? Yeah, that place is special. What, wait, also, what place? I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. You, you, you eat what? It's a breakfast place called First Watch. First Watch. Is that on yeah. I don't know where that is. That's like, uh, I guess it's towards Durham. The one I live close to is towards Durham. Anyway, I'm going to go to either First Watch or I'm going to go to Dame's Chicken and Waffles. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a takeout, though, because, you know, you can't trust the COVID kids. I got to come back home, uh, probably watch some games, probably eat some sushi for lunch, come back, watch some more football, um, call my brother, my girlfriend, make sure everybody's all right, just you. Just watch the so, Yeah, so so you basically be taking it easy, but how, how do you kind of, how do you try and keep a mental edge? How do you try and stay sharp just in terms of the football of it? Because you guys are going to have, you know, you're going to be so far between actual live games by the time you finally play, whether it's Boston College or later than that. Yeah, uh, for me, I guess it's kind of interesting. Like, I love football, like, I love football. I love watching it. I love just competing. And, and, and it's not like a in, a in a weird way, but like I like to see how other backs play. Because like, you know, you can learn from anybody in any situation, any day. Um, some guys have like really stood out to me on other teams is uh, uh, the running back from Miami. He's doing good. Love the way he plays. He's fast. He's physical. Um, running back from SMU. Um, he's like more like my size and one of the bigger backs, but he's a great player too. So um, for me, I just like I just like to watch, and that's how I stay sharp. I watch other guys, and you know, see you know see what it looks like because I want to be the best. And you know, I spend I spend all my nights like watching YouTube highlights of the best running backs in the league, all time and current. But like, it's like you got to see it to know how to do it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like if you want, you got to look, you got to see who you want to become because, or else you have no other example. All right, thanks, man. Michael, thanks so much for your time.